Greetings from Microlab Northwest. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about house dust. You know, people think that the dust in the house is somehow just house dust. Actually, it's material that's come in from four different major sources. The first, of course, is the occupants in the home. They create all kinds of particles characteristic of the occupants of the home. The occupants are not just human beings. They include pets. They include little critters that you might not expect in your home, like insects, mites, bats, birds, a whole variety of critters that may be impacting the indoor space that you might not realize are actually part of that indoor space. Every room in the house is impacted differently by the occupants. They spend more time in one place over another. That will affect how much they impact that particular room. Another major source in homes are the activities that are done in that home. Like for instance, cooking creates a lot of material that will be concentrated in the kitchen and the rooms immediately adjacent to the kitchen. There are a number of other activities that might go on in the house that will impact the area primarily where those activities are taking place. Then there's the outdoor space. Homes breathe necessarily. They bring in oxygen, which we need to breathe, but they also bring in particles with that. So the particles that are on the outside come in to the inner space. Those include pollens, fungal spores, spores from ferns and mosses, plant parts, a whole variety of things that come in from outdoors. There's also activities outdoor that impact indoor. For instance, roads. You get all kinds of vehicle emissions. You get emissions from the friction between the tires and the road, those come in from outdoors. You get activities like yard care that may create debris that ends up coming indoors. Comes in through doors, comes in through windows, comes in through a variety of openings that are in the home. Ways for things outside to come in. And then there are the particles that are created by the structure itself. Like for instance, ventilation system. Ventilation system creates particles. And those particles are introduced into the indoor space. Painting activities, construction activities, remodeling. All kinds of things that involve the structure itself that results in creating additional particles, part of the indoor environmental exposure. We'll cover each one of these separately. But, you know, as we look at these areas, we will see that each room has its own characteristic collection of material. Each room will show what is going on in the proximity of that room, and that room will have a different background than other rooms in the environment. Let's start out just looking at the particles that are created by the occupants of the environment. Human beings, just by their very nature, moving around, create millions of particles of skin flakes per minute. A tremendous load. 
the volume of space that we occupy, the volume of the room that we're in when we're doing certain things, will affect how many skin flakes per unit area end up settling on surfaces. Hair is another material that we exfoliate. Cosmetics and clothing. Clothing wears. As we flex, move, we're putting a stress on the fabric in the clothing, and that creates more particles. Human beings are not the only occupant. Pets, they also exfoliate skin and hair. So we will see dander from dogs, cats, perhaps pet bird, or other critter. Those are all going to be contributing skin flakes and hair to the environment. And perhaps some of the things that uh, we really don't expect. Animals will quite often bring in debris from outdoors. But we'll cover that in the outside discussion. Then there are the spiders, the insects, and the mites that also occupy our home. Some of them are very, very small. You might not even recognize the fact that they're there. But they are part of the indoor environment created by these occupants. They leave behind small fragments of animals that have died. They leave behind parts of the carapace that they exfoliate as they move from one stage to another in their life. Those are also left as debris in the home, and we can see those things. There are about 125 different mites or more that can live in the indoor space. Many of these we might be highly allergic to. <clears throat> so they'll occupy kind of a special uh, concern in the indoor space. These mites will leave behind frass, that is their excrement, as well as their larval stages, and finally their body as they pass away. That's all debris that is in carpets on various surfaces in the home that uh, may cause us some issues. Dermistid beetles, uh, little carpet beetles, are uh, a special critter that lives in the indoor space. Quite often, when you're looking at particles indoors, you'll actually find hair or care piece of other insects that had been munched by the larval form of these carpet beetles. They're pretty little guys. <laughs> As you can see, they're kind of fuzzy. Occasionally, we'll even see hairs from bats or rodents. Rodent hair has some nice characteristics. The pigment tends to concentrate in the center part of the hair, in what's called the medulla. And as you can see here, we have clumps of pigment in the center part, the medulla of the hair. That's very characteristic of rodents of all types. Rat hair has specific characteristics as do mouse hairs. They're all going to be slightly different, but we can identify them. In looking at some homes, at times we might even find bat hair. Bat hair has a unique structure, as you can see. The scale pattern on the outside is very exaggerated with bat hair. So these are some of the things that we can see 
we'll see cosmetics. That also is produced by the occupants in the home and has a number of different forms. The nice little glitter that is contained by many cosmetics shows up very nicely under the microscope. We'll also see rutile, a reddish pigment that is part of a lot of different cosmetics. Those show up again in the home. We can see evidence, for instance, of uh, grooming behavior for the human occupants of the home using uh, starch, for instance, as a body powder. Starch will show up predominantly in bedrooms and bathroom area, but it'll also show up in the kitchen from cooking activities. We'll see whiskers from shaving or from uh, grooming a beard. They have characteristic structures where the whiskers have been cut. We can see if they are cut every day or two or if weeks go by before they're trimmed. All of that shows up in the structure of the hair. House dust is an amazing source of information. We'll see another source in our next video. We'll take a look at some of the stuff that comes in from outside. Stuff that comes in from outside will tend to be concentrated along windowsills, along uh, areas close to doors or entry points in the home, but it can be distributed more widely over time. We'll see that next time. So for now, see you later.